Hello and welcome to Staying Up with Cami and Taryn. I'm Cami. And I'm Taryn. And every night, Cami and I have a sleepover. But every week we invite you to join us. So thanks for staying up. Thanks for staying up, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Boy, do we got a treat for you. Today is episode 50, <laughs> PBs. Or episode one, season two. But episode 50 just sounds so much cooler, right? Episode 50 is feeling better. And we also will, <laughs> won't we? We're going to stick with the counting. Yeah, but do we say season two, episode one? Or do we post? No. We just say episode. 50 I we think do seasons, seasons are dumb okay it's not season two it is episode 50 it's seasons season one 2.0 yeah <laughs> seasons are over um yeah seasons are dead done and you don't even know what seasons are I don't even know what, what are. season are we in I think this is technically still winter yes good which is insane I'm proud of there you there are birds chirping <laughs> that's not a winter activity um if you're watching on video well okay epi 50 back it up baby back it up big epi for us big huge Ooh, that sounded like trump Sorry. disgusting Sorry. We, huge. No. we are proud that we've done it i'm not just proud but i'm just excited like going into this i really did think we are just going to capture wedding planning content it's a fun thing for you and me to do i really miss sit down youtube videos chatting to people yes and I just thought we were going to do it for a few months to a year and it was going to be a fun little project we did did together. Yeah. And that was it. So the fact that this is and episode 50 is kooky. It's kooky. And so to celebrate such a big epi, um, we did a few things. First of all, we if you're watching, fun. if you're watching on video, you can see this isn't finished, but we have begun new setup. a new setup. Yeah. We, we have a lot to do. I guess I can't see it. There's shelves above us that like literally just have Legos on them. <laughs> it feels so embarrassing. <laughs> It's like so embarrassing. It really like, is. I love a Lego and I will keep buying them for hundreds of millions of dollars. But I think we need to immediately donate them to like those ones where they remake them and all that, you know? 100%. We need to do that. Sorry, we just got a thing on our thing and I thought someone unlocked our door. But it said something about our Wi-Fi. We're spooky. I know. I literally was I like, this feels so at your important. watch. I thought you got like a heart thing and I was like, oh, you know, like, episode 50 is over. <sighs> spooky. Okay. So new setup has begun. Um, not been completed. Yeah. What else is new? New microphones? New mics. Um, new audio because we had a big issue we're not going to get into a couple episodes back. Mm -hmm. We just upgraded. We upgraded for our PPs because you Things guys deserve everything good. Everything good going <laughs> oh. to you. Also, I know it was such a bummer for us and all of you guys when our group chat on the Geneva app went bye-bye because they stopped sharing it in specific countries that a lot of our peepees are in so we have a new group chat coming we have a new group well it's here it, it, it does exist yeah it's not coming it is here right now you can go on it at this second we ended up using discord which hey 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 for hey, all hey, hey, hey. for all my girlies out there who are like i don't fucking know how to use discord it's just for gamers i don't get it i too was you i once i was you too we all were you two. You two is everywhere. Oh my god! I can't you two paid that. for us to say this, <laughs> but it's actually super easy and it's so similar to the Geneva app. So if you did use that, it's like the little rooms. You can be where you want to be. There's so many different categories. We have area for you to ask or give advice, share your pets, share goofy stories, get to know each other, maybe find the next love of your life. I don't know. Maybe we'll do live dating shows on there. I was just there. gonna say we should do a dating show. We don't. I want to do like speed dating on discord <gasps> we're doing it the short of it is that it is a group chat and our favorite thing about this community is talking to you guys you guys are hilarious we just met some of you we meet a lot of you out in the wild at various gay things and mm -hmm. we met some people we're not gay things yeah normally gay things, mostly gay yeah. things. <laughs> we met some of you at futch last weekend whatever and yeah. it was Lovely. It's always lovely meeting a pee, pee It's always lovely. And the coming up and going, I'm a pee, pee is crazy and so special. And I'm so proud that you guys just say it out out loud and in public. Look, it's not a name that we wanted. It's not. It's, it's a not. name that was gifted to us. It, it's who we are. So all to say, we're trying to bring this virtual, right? We're going back into our group chat AIM fun days. Mm -hmm. Um for Slack girlies, it's very similar to Slack on Discord. So here's how you're going to get on it. Let the peepees know. Let the peepees know. <laughs> well, I actually guess that there's more. 
Wait a second. But wait, <laughs> what's behind door number two? W- w- Along wait a minute. <laughs> with the Discord, we have a Patreon. We started a Patreon, which is insane to say for me because I used so to work there. And it's kind of the whole background of how you and I know each other. Whoa. Well, we Isn't that crazy? A Patreon. We wouldn't know each other if it wasn't for Patreon. I would know you. You just wouldn't know me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is literally true. That's crazy. Um, so we started a Patreon, uh, if you want to support the show and also get some extra goodies, if you go to patreon.com slash staying up, you will receive one. You can do the free version just to get access to the discord. Yes. Two, you can do the paid version. Thank you everyone for your feedback on costs and what you would want. It is $5 a month. You will get access to the private room, the bedroom on discord. Mm-hmm. This is where shit's getting juicy. Shit's getting juicy. We're not holding back. Taryn and I are going to be active all across the Discord, but this, it's like, I'm checking this first. Yep. We are staying up with our top tier PPs. Yes. I don't know what we're calling them, but. No, they're called tops. It's a top Oh, PP. yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Taryn was like, what should we call them? And we were dying. <laughs> yeah, you guys are tops. You guys are the tops of the PP community. Kudos, kudos. Um, and you will also get a special color on Discord if you are a top PP. Little badge. So for five bucks, you get the special room access which is yep. called the bedroom you get a special color as a top pp <laughs> so that when you are interacting throughout Discord, people know you're a top people know you're a top <laughs> um and it's okay if you're not a top but well it's you're also a top like pp most of us aren't pillow princesses and we're all pp it's like we are who we it's are it's silly funny it's a top PP. But you can let people know your bottom if you feel offended by being called a top and third you will get one bonus episode and or live stream a month we mm-hmm. think it will be a bonus episode at the least. So yeah. this will just be only available to the top peepees on Patreon. It's only our, our special peepees. Um, it might be our true selves. It might be us coming home from a tipsy night and pulling out the mics. Yeah, this is where we're also going to be testing stuff. So it might get a little unhinged. Like Who's to say? we've been wanting to take mics out while we're at dinner. Mm-hmm. So if you want to see like unfiltered cam and tear <laughs> not that we're very filtered on here unfiltered. unfiltered and wild um you're gonna want to get on on that and we are so stoked about it um but again there is the free discord we didn't want it's so important for us to create this community we didn't yes. want it to be behind a paywall but we also want to make sure we can keep people out who should not be on there and are disrupting the community um so we're gonna try to make sure it's the safest best place but we wanted to make sure there was a special room where we could really engage and make sure it's like 100 percent only peepees in there yeah and why we went to patreon is just because many peepees were like you guys should do a patreon it makes yeah. sense and patreon or podcasts tend to do really well on patreon in terms of community building and stuff so um we're excited so excited go to patreon.com slash staying up that is where we will be Um, and happy to any feedback if there's specific stuff that you do want to see from us for the paid subscription tell us we're happy to do that we're going to be in the discord doing live chats and broadcasts as well which our first one is going to come up this friday the 16th at 3 p.m pacific time yes Friday yes. the 16th, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Tara and I are going to be in there and just do like a little live chat, maybe Q&A, mm-hmm. maybe bring some of you up on the stage to chat with us. Um, so come join. It's going to be really fun. And that'll be open to everyone on the Discord. This one is not secret, private, PP tops. So many words. Wait. I loved it. Top PP. Yeah, but I was thinking like. Maybe we'll do a top two- secret. Top secret. Because they're tops top and it's secret. secret. Yeah, yeah, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. <laughs> Um, is that enough of the housekeeping? It felt like I think we're we nailed done. everything. We yeah. have we have new graphics. Oh my god, we look different, don't we? <laughs> Our cover picture looks so good. We totally rebranded. Um, the previous staying up branding was literally made on a whim in Canva just to get something up. Yes, it, we just threw something together again, thinking. Who knows how long this is going to be happening? Yeah. Now we're here to stay. And yeah. so You're season two, not season two. Up. We're staying up. And <laughs> season one forever, baby. We are excited. And thank you for being with us. Genuinely, thank you for being with us for 50 episodes. It feels like New Year's Day right now. It totally does. Does it feel like a fresh start? Like totally. We're getting ready. I'm like, what's happening this year? Are we stoked? I'm so excited. And it's been really fun to invest in the podcast. Like we, you know, want to pay a designer. So we paid our designer 
to to do all this for us. We bought these newer microphones. We like it's so fun. Just it's fun. Taryn to, just loves buying stuff. Honestly, no, 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 no. She's not worried about like investing in the quality. She doesn't buy shit. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's, but it is so I'm nice kidding. to like put your money where your mouth is. Like I, literally. literally. <gasps> No. If we both went cross-eyed uh, at our microphones, I wish the cameras, that's our next investment, two more cameras yeah, to get too. nice shots of themselves. Anyways, um, but yeah, also this is the year of the baby, um, which is a really exciting journey. We've shared little glimpses of it oh with you God, guys. Oh my God, I thought you meant like Chinese calendar. This is called the year of the baby. Yeah, I don't, it could be like the rooster or the goat. Who knows I'm, what, what this year I, is. I didn't know baby was one. <laughs> it's not. But this is our year of the baby. Yeah. Um, and as we get rolling with actually doing doctor's visits and all of that, I we really want to share as much as we can and as candidly as we can with y'all because the most frustrating thing for me has been the lack of representation in this. Um, there mm. are a few people sharing. And every time I say that, people send me accounts, which is really nice to kind of get inspo and feel like you're less alone but it's such a weird scary endeavor and we have to do it in such a specific way yeah and I've been learning so much about IVF I'm like kind of scared the more I learn but also relieved it's just fun it's really exciting yeah. and I'm excited to kind of take them along on this journey with us guys we're having a baby pee pee oh a little baby pee pee should we name him Peter Peter Parker <laughs> Peppa Pig <laughs> Dude, what if every time that someone said that they were a pee pee, it was a new? They had to say a new name, like Pia, Pia Mia. We always go. We oh always, my gosh, I, Pia Mia. you know how last week we were talking about Dua Lipa's sister? Yeah, it's Rena Lipa. Rena, Rena. That's not feeling right. Now I'm un- unsure, but Pia Mia, Rena Lipa. <laughs> Put it's them like all the same room. vibe. Where that's why we went Pia Mia last I see, week. I see, I see. I think it's Rena Lipa. Um, I- I'm sticking with that. That feels correct to me i would also like to say thank you for bearing with me as i worked through my thoughts in the previous episode um oh i really i was really scared to publish that when we got you were also like just starting your period so i think i was in a bad way you always get really um you can say not just no 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 like sensitive like everything's a bigger deal like that's one of your pms vibes of like yeah everything becomes a little more doomsday for you yeah so as soon as we stopped recording you were like i don't know that we should post that like i feel like i don't i don't come off really good in that and i texted two of our friends in a group chat and i was like y'all can i tell you what just happened on this episode i want to make sure that i don't sound i want to just just tell me how this sounds Mm -hmm. um and just got feedback from people and whatever and i'm just was stalking the comments which was un- so unhealthy for me yeah um but all to say i think at the end of the day it was a healthy conversation and totally. i'm proud of i'm proud we didn't cut it because i'm proud that we were able to like work through it live and i feel like you know yeah and i i think those conversations and disagreements or seeing things from different perspectives is so important and it's it was really important because your thoughts came from your personal biases from your personal experiences which we all do no one sees something through a lens of like completely neutral we take in our own even I did in the conversation and sure my opinion might have been more common especially in the lesbian community yeah but I think it was so beneficial to be like oh you have this different idea why are you having this different idea where are you coming from and to see you kind of process and change your mind throughout and for me to kind of change my mind and understand where you're coming from yeah we all need to be better at that so I'm so glad that's what this podcast is about if we cut everything that doesn't show us in a favorable light Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm cutting the clips for socials, I'm like, oh my God, I sound terrible in that. But I'm going to share it because it's, it <laughs> like is what, what happened. I don't know. I just like, I I remembered in the moment I thought I was coming, I was sounding sarcastic and like clearly joking around and it came off so bitchy. And I was like, mm. that's not what I meant. Yeah. And if I'm misunderstanding me, everyone else is going <laughs> to misunderstand me if I'm not even getting this bitch right now. I was just thinking we were both on different podcasts this week, like without each other, which is mm-hmm. kind of cute. It was. Cute. It felt like we were on like 
lads on tour. Yeah. We're and I like tour. to talk about you to other people. It's Dude, really same. Fun. I like it's fun to be like my wife. I yeah. <laughs> um, and what what were you on? I was on Ben Gay. It is Loves so it. funny. Um, such a great group of people. Such fun conversations. It's like the perfect blend of getting serious and being so silly and goofy. I think my episode comes out in like a week and a half. Um, I'll be sure to share it when it does. It's so good. I was on a pod called You Can't Get to Heaven in a Mini Skirt. <gasps> Wait, shut up. That's, that's the, the cutest name ever. I didn't know that's what it was called. Um, and <laughs> Wait, what was I going to tell? I brought it up for something that you said. Fuck. That I said? Yeah, you were saying something and I started like, la- oh, sound how how funny it sounds listening to yourself say something and being like, wow, I don't mean to come off like that. Yeah. Um, I was talking about like becoming gay, like my journey into gaydom. And I, they were like, oh, you know, what were your signs growing up? Did you notice anything? And I, brought, I love that term. Like, what were the signs? Yeah, like, how did you know what were the symptoms? <laughs> the but, symptoms. Um, but I said, I said I was always really clued into girls. Like, I was always like, on, like really clued into women. And then I stopped myself and I was like, I sound disgusting. It sounds creepy. I don't I mean was that. So too. I was so aware. I know. Of <laughs> I was just tuned in. A girl, I sniffed them out from a mile away. <laughs> and I, we were all dying. I was like, I meant to say that, like, I was very aware of, like, where girls were in the room. Like, I was very, like, hyper, like. Yeah. Their presence whatever. was, like, loud, heavy on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was, like, 80 boys and you were like, one woman is here. Yeah. Yeah, you felt connected to female energy. Yes, I yes. Think. But it was so funny to be, like, in that scenario where it's new people that I don't know. And I'm like, how is this coming and off one of right them's now? a pee pee. So I know she listens to all the podcasts. Okay, she gets it. <laughs> I'm sure she gets it. But it was just so like, it was one of those moments where you're cringing for yourself. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm gross. But I can't believe you realized it while saying it. When I edit <laughs> this podcast and I like hear, you always catch it if I say the wrong thing. Mm. Like I did a couple times in the last podcast and you like called me out. And I was like, that's not what I, did I say that? Like, did I stumble mm. over those words? And I'm like, God, how many times in my real life do I just say something completely wrong and I just don't realize it or I come off wrong? Oh, it unlocked a new fear that I did not need to unlock. I don't know what that is in me. We were just, I was in a meeting before this, like a work meeting, and one girl called the other girl, not her name, and I can't stop thinking about it. No one acknowledged it, and I just oh, can't no. stop thinking about it. That's awkward, though. But it was but like, it was probably just a slip. Like the other person it was like was in a in, list. Like it yeah. was like, oh, Taryn and da da da. Anything to add? And yeah. then the girl was like, no, didn't like acknowledge. Like that's not my name or anything, which is fine. Was the person she said in the room? Yes. Okay, so she just like referred the one. She just like slip, <laughs> yeah. mixed it up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised you were never like wanting to be a singer or something growing up. I feel like here, like. That kind of ear is really similar. And you love mimicking. That kind of ear. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like like Justin Bieber can't speak Spanish, but he can sing yes. in Spanish so well because he yeah. just, someone says it to him, like, he'll be recording a song and they'll be like, blah, 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 And he's yeah. like, blah, 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 He says it perfectly because he yeah. can mimic really well. You can do that and you, like, hear every little slip up. I hear every made. nook and cranny. <laughs> if anyone toots around me, I'll hear it. Um, I feel like I need to make an addendum oh to last week's episode where i said i'm not a diy girly so much has changed so, so much well, has I, changed. I had to like think about it and i was like why that's like saying i'm not a guitar player i'm not a tennis player that's correct when you but you have a desire to be and you have the natural ability to, to be or like whatever it may be you're you have a good ear for music and you're like oh I could pick up an instrument yes but it's you can't claim you're never gonna be that it's not like a characteristic trait to not be a DIY person and I think I have all of the prereqs Mm -hmm. to become one so I realized I just need to like hone this skill and just try and 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 not be afraid to fail and mess up and like ruin something in our house that uh, it can be fixed look What's a DIYer? Somebody who does it themselves. And I'll do it myself. You will do it yourself, baby. But I always said it's just because I'm so impatient. And once I have an idea of doing something, it has to be done right then and there. Like, I will cut my own hair. I will color my own hair. I will, like, do any... <laughs> color my own hair. I will. I will. I have. I've done it so many times. Um, because I want it done and I want it done right now. I need instant gratification yeah. once I 
I have something made up in my mind. Um, but I decided over this last week that I'm going to become a DIY girl. And that I did. I completely redid our bathroom. It was insane. I also love to design, but I always doubt my design abilities because I didn't like formally train. I just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. And I think I have a natural knack for it, but I just don't know. Like I'm, I'll be like, I think that might look good. I don't know why. Yeah. Like we painted the bathroom and I was like, no, we have to paint the baseboards too and everything. Yeah. And it looks so much better it having that painted. So much better. You I think it's a skill I have that I need to work on and stop discrediting myself just because I haven't worked on it. So I'm going to do that. This year, I have changed my whole brand. Yep. Um, you will never see me speak about skincare and beauty again. Just kidding. Uh, you absolutely will. But now you're going to see a lot of DIY and then eventually baby. I'm going to DIY a baby. Like, that isn't that crazy? Whoa. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, we make it. Doing I'm doing it. Ourselves. it. Yeah, huh. My body is going to form a human. I mean, that's DIY. That is, that is ever DIY. Heard that's of it. DIY. I was just thinking because we have to like buy sperm well, off the whatever. market. Whatever. I mean, I have to buy paint. I'm excited. Doesn't mean to- I didn't do the bathroom. God, I keep wanting to freaking dab you up. Um, <laughs> what did I do earlier? And you were like, that's so cringy. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you were doing like a voice. Oh, I was acting like um, Travis Kelsey. But it wasn't. It was a different I was voice. Going, Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, but you were doing different voice and then you're like, it reminds me of. And it was so funny when we were watching the Super Bowl <laughs> and Travis Kelsey up there after he won was like, v- he also did like a call in response thing. He was going, Viva! Viva! Oh, yeah. Like okay, was in. that? Yeah, I don't know. It was gross. And I literally was stood there like, bet me Taylor's getting the ick right now. And they pan the camera to her and she's doing the she's ick like, face. The like, uh, I'm on camera, so I'm going to smile and be supportive, but I'm so grossed out. And yeah. please shave your beard tonight, baby. Please. Ew, his cheesy beard. I can't. I kept taking pictures of it sticking out of his helmet. His <laughs> chin strap, his beard chin strap sticking out of his helmet chin strap was disgusting. Whatever. But you know what? Whatever. They're happy. Go Chiefs. Congrats. Congrats to our Kansas City peepees. We know there are some of you. Love you guys. Um, excited to not talk about the Chiefs for a minute. Me too. Just like, let's have a break. Let's have a break. Um, But yeah, now Cami is our designer and we're very proud of her. She's amazing. <laughs> She's a star. She's gorgeous. She's special. <laughs> and Thanks. you really let me help. And I appreciate that. I feel like we had a chat. We had a chat. We had a couple chats this week since there was this a lot of DIYing. So happened. embarrassing, but go ahead. What? No, just go ahead. For me, not for you. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Continue. Am I am I gonna be embarrassed? I'm feeling like I'm I, gonna be embarrassed. No, just me. Just me. So basically, when Cammy lets me help with DIY E things, I get very excited because it, it she's the chef. In our house, we do a chef, head chef and a sous chef situation. <laughs> And we go back and forth. Like when I'm cooking, I'm head chef and she's sous chef. Mm-hmm. But when we're DIYing, you're head chef and I'm sous chef. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited to help. I'm very excited to do my little things. Um, and I want her approval deeply. I really want your approval. You're so cute. And there were a couple times where little old me was painting, playing, whatever. And Kami didn't like how I did something. And it was said in a way that made me sad. And then... It's not that I didn't like it. I'm just trying to teach. Like... I learned how to paint very young. My dad yeah. would paint our house and he showed me like, this is how you do the strokes. You don't want to go too fast. It splatters everywhere. Yeah. So I, you don't like to be critiqued. So there's really no way this to say it. This is not going how I planned. Because, okay, sorry. Because you said sorry for sometimes the way you would come off at, at me was I said a little barky. My, did I say that? Oh. Yes, and then and then I said, "Hey, I want to do this with you, and it's making me feel yes, like I yes, don't yes. when yeah. you do this so often and with an intensity it makes me yeah. not want to do it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were like, "Totally, I get that. I'm sorry." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all I'm saying. That yeah. was lovely and then for I, me because I, I said felt, to you and Sim after doing the bathroom, like, "I appreciate both your help." Sorry, I micromanage projects. Yes. Um, okay, What's embarrassing is, for you? So I had a realization about my um, need for speed. My <laughs> My arc to DIY okay. Project All Star, okay, um, and that was that I need to do the projects alone. <laughs> That's so sad. Be- okay, let me explain. Aww, let me explain. Now I feel like it done. Let me explain. No. That's what I meant by saying no. I'm gonna feel embarrassed. You shouldn't be embarrassed. I'm 
preaching how proud I am to get to help you and be your Sue. Yeah. And you're kicking me out of the kitchen. But okay, I think this is also, I need to find a way where I can out actually be head chef and have soup. like I was in painting the bathroom I wasn't doing the parts that I wanted to be doing but I like didn't want to give orders and tell you and Sim like oh you have to be doing this you have to be doing this like we were asking you to give us orders no but like it was clear that you guys didn't want to do certain things like when we got started I was saying that when you paint you need to cut in first we have to do all the edges first and then you take the roller and go in okay. and I had to finish the vanity painting and Sim was like, I'm going to do the roller. And I was like, fuck it, fine. Do whatever you want. And I'm, I was like, don't be controlling. Don't be controlling. <laughs> and then like, you guys need to clean the baseboards was. first. Like that needs done. And you guys didn't want to do that. So then, no. and that's how I feel whenever doing projects where I'm like, I was so I sick on my having, period is all I'm going to say too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, so I don't want to bend over and clean a baseboard. For sure. For sure. As in my standing. But mode. in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm not really being head chef and having Sue's because then Sue's kind of do like, <laughs> the brunt of the like the parts that aren't that great like they're cutting the cilantro for an hour yeah they're not getting to like cook the steak yeah like they have to do but I feel I don't like I don't like to tell people what to do okay so then I'm just like okay I'm gonna do I was using the shitty paintbrush because I didn't want to make one of you use a shitty paintbrush I don't have a bowl for the paint so I'm going up and down and up and down. like I made it harder on myself okay. so that you guys had a fun time and I didn't feel controlling but then I realized that it just like made it not enjoyable for me so I either huh. need to allocate better and be like if you want to help I'm going to be real particular yeah here are the roles this is what we're doing and and like I decided early on like I'm not, if you guys mess up, I'm going to let it go. It's not a big deal. But the one thing I'm going to be picky about is the vanity because I took so much time painting that. Yeah. So I kept saying to you guys, do whatever you want. But if you mess up my vanity, you're both dead to me. Yeah. I didn't know you weren't having a, a I just felt like I was. I felt like you were bossing us around a little bit too. <laughs> well, I was like trying to be like, no, I'm trying to say I want it done right. My thing is that totally. I rush stuff and I cut corners and I don't do them right. Yeah. So I'm trying to, and the bathroom was like my first thing where I'm like, I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to take the drawers off the vanity before I paint them. I'm not going to cut corners. And then having like three people in this small room and then we were cutting cor- corners. I was like, oh, this is not going how I told myself I was going to do it. So I like let yeah. go of that. But I think I either need to do projects on my own or be like, this is how it is. Everything's getting clean first. Like I'm going to be super particular. Here's the list and the order of how it's going to go. Yes. If you don't want to help with this, that's fine. But I'm going to set those roles before. I was so like that. So that I'm not like stressed out. I don't want it to be, I have to go do it alone. I want to help. I want to be a sous chef. And a good sous chef knows what the chef want, wants done. Yeah. But and the, I but the like, chef has to communicate. And I don't feel like I communicate until I'm like frustrated struck. and pissed off. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm That's, not, I have the shitty thing. I'm trying to be, make this easy. And then like once we got to the point where I was like, Okay, yeah, just make sure you guys wipe down the baseboards and it, that didn't happen and you guys are like painting over the d- dirty baseboards. I was like, now I'm just irritated and I'm not having fun because I've been trying to be so lenient yeah. and now I'm at my boiling point and nobody knows that. And now I'm just feeling not relaxed and not fun where I need to are communicate you- ahead of time, set those parameters. And then that way I can be like, hey, don't forget, blah, blah, blah. And like instead of just being like, here's paintbrushes, go off. I'm going to be like, this is how you do this. Like, let me just show you. Do you feel like that's a pattern? Because I'm feeling like this might be a hundred percent through. I think that I and I've talked about this on the pod before. Like, I am. I don't. I'm afraid to like lean into strengths that I can see as being annoying, as like being very organized. Okay. Being very analytical, but I know that's how my brain works and how I like to be. Yeah. Where instead of trying to like hide that and mask that because not something that's going to change nor do I necessarily want it to change no it's a good they're good qualities yeah but I I think people could see them as bad and then I get nervous okay but then it just makes it worse because then halfway through the task or whatever it may be conversation whatever it is that I'm trying to like not be the way I am yeah I'm frustrated and the other party isn't aware of that so then it just seems like I'm overreacting or like I have a short fuse or whatever it may be. And it's like, no, I have been silently working through this for however long, no matter what it is. And now I'm like, I can't take this anymore where I think I just need to be upfront. This is how it is. Like I'm particular in how this is. Like I Mm -hmm. 
I these are my needs in this moment or yeah. like sharing up front and then it's easier for the painting I can be like hey do uh, this is how we got to do this this and this and then halfway through if somebody's not doing that I can say oh don't forget blah 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 instead of being like that's not right right especially in our rel- relationship where I feel like you don't do well with criticism where I feel like that could be a nice way to be like, let's set the parameters ahead of time. These are the expectations. Let's talk about it first. Let's take five minutes to communicate and save ourselves an hour of frustration or argument later. 100%. So yeah, that was my breakthrough. That's a big breakthrough. Wait, I had another breakthrough that I think you'll really like too. Can I respond to breakthrough number one? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Before we get too deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't mind at all being organized having you be organized being um even prescriptive of how you want something to be yeah even if it's in a fight or if it's how we do a thing or if it's whatever I never care I only care about delivery totally and so I think that is what where our wires are getting a little Mm -hmm. crossed or where they have gotten crossed is because I think you're pent up by the time that you give me a a reminder or whatever and then you think that I don't like criticism but really I don't like well I do I do still think you also don't like criticism like who likes criticism it's not about liking it but it's like taking that feedback like I I know that I have to be very cautious like if it's not even a pent-up thing I know I need to be like this is gonna hurt her feelings a little even and I see it I see it on your face and I'm like Hey, babe, don't forget, blah, 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 blah. And you'll be like, I see your face drop of like, shoot. Where. Yeah, I mean, sure, I don't like you know, to not do things. But right. I think it's a bad combo of I hold it in. So I think I'm being gentle with my delivery given how frustrated I am. I'm like, yes. oh, I'm irritated. I'm going to be calm. And I think it's calm. But in your mind, it's you don't know anything about the irritation. So I you're am, like, that's my reality zero to 60. Is that I'm humming along like, what? painting like we were having wife. fun i'm having a great day and then you're like Rah, yeah how it feels yeah and i'm like oh my god how is she so pent up like how is she so like there's so much yeah there. where did this come from yes a hundred percent so that gave me a big epiphany that's a big epiphany yeah it was really nice. really good about this i feel really good about it too and i it's gonna take a while to work on though because i know that i i hold back because i try to talk myself out of feelings like in the beginning, when I am getting frustrated, I'm like, oh, don't do that. Don't think that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, that's okay. It's I need to let myself feel those initial things and at least feel them and work them out on my own. Yeah. I don't always have to vocalize it. Yeah. But I'm like afraid to vocalize things and then it just gets too big and it's silly. My other thought was... Breakthrough number one, broken through. The My other thought was that I think when it's your person you have so much less patience because you're with them all the time. Like if you don't like the way your person handles something or does something, it's not just like a coworker or a friend where you're like, okay, I'm not constantly doing this activity. Yeah, you're not my responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I like, and I noticed it while we were painting, like I, I was inclined to be like more critical of you than Simone. Yeah. And I realized it in doing it and – luckily you were like no sim was supposed to do that and i was like you're right like that's not that on, a big moment for that's me. not on you yeah and then like our friendship with sim is so like we all pick on each other so it was easy to be like sim get your shit together like yeah. you you were supposed to do that yeah and it was like funny moment but i was like oh i of all people i should be standing up the most for and defending the most it should be you yeah the person i should have the most patience for is you so oh, that was wow. my other breakthrough of like it's so hard. The person you're all, the person you're closest with is always going to get the brunt of yeah. things. Yeah. But it's like I think everyone can work on that skill of like give your person the benefit of the doubt. Give your person the patience. Every ounce of patience you have, f- throw it into your partner, mm. and then whatever you have left for everybody else. Because like that's also Maybe. the person that they have to be around you the most too. Wow. So I love you. Happy Valentine's my Day. My goodness, what a happy Valentine's Day treat. Okay, sorry for my rant. That's okay. What what you got for me? Oh, well, no, but this just made me think that I also had an epiphany yesterday. Oh? Not about us. Oh? But I would like to tell you about it. Okay. Which is that um, when I was on that podcast, 
Can't Get to Heaven in a Miniskirt. Definitely listen to the episode. It's going to be out in like two weeks, I think. Um, it's all about deconstructing faith and leaving the Christian church, et cetera. But one of the things that we talked about that I didn't tell you on our walk yesterday mm. was that I realized that my decline in journaling started when I left Christianity mm. because I would write as prayer. Yeah. And like you, we went through my journals like a month ago or something. And every journal is like, hey, God, da 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 da. And Sup, I'm big man. <laughs> telling him stuff. I was telling yeah. him stuff. And then since there's no clear audience for me, mm -hmm. I can't get back into it the yeah, way that like, I who was. Who is this for? Yeah. Is it future me? Is it But even the fact listening? that it's not, it's so frustrating because mm -hmm. I don't want there to have to be an audience. And yeah. obviously like God is not an audience. But, like I big mean like audience, you could be the I know, audience. But it just, it wasn't as easy. Like mm. I don't, I don't know. Well, so, it's also like I, it's your experience. Yeah, like, like who? Why I already have to know tell this. Me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I've never been good at journaling, so I've. I'm really gonna work on it. I'm going to. I miss it, and I love it, and I just listen to a podcast I miss your all about. Too. Thanks, honey. But I just listen to a podcast all about like. The importance of logging and getting things out, and mm -hmm. how one of the biggest things with journaling is that it allows you to create meaning. Yeah. Out of your experience. And it allows you to like real time reframe things mm -hmm. that are happening because like if you're looking at a bad situation as you're like writing it out, yeah. you're able to like coach yourself mm -hmm. because you're like sitting in it a little bit more. Yeah. It's like you're playing observer and person at the same time or like person that's experiencing it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'll say that was a big thing for me and I want to figure that out. Yeah. What, what if you wrote? To like our future kid or something. I Or oh, then you'd maybe censor it a little yeah, bit. I would say it wouldn't be the same thing. It's like yeah. I, what I want to talk to our kid about is not what I want in me. Yeah. So that's why it, speaking to God is like kind of the perfect audience because it's someone outside of you. Yep. It's someone you're trying to be 100% honest with. Yep. It's someone that you're supposed to like, I don't know what the religious term is, but like manifest good coming to you. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just like, it's like a, just a weird... I can't find a replacement mm. in Christians. This is not an invitation for you to tell me there is no re replacement for God and that. Yeah, shut that up. Please don't. <laughs> um, don't but I annoying. just can't find a replacement for that specific thing. And I find it upsetting. I also I, think for you in the things you miss about what church brought. Yeah. It's like you can get all of those things in other places, but it's like harder to seek out, I guess, and find those replacements. We had this exact conversation on the podcast, which you must go, li must go listen to. Oh, I can't. So should you. I can't wait. Um, so should you. <laughs> I also have a very interesting thing to tell you. Ooh, what? Well, you know, because I accidentally told you the answer. Because, oh. well, no, you saw our shared note. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. guys, <laughs> peepees. For a second. This is so random. I just want to. How many chips come out of one potato? Take your time. Take your fucking it. time. Look, but also, what? Like an average potato? Average potato. Like, I'm thinking, like, a russet potato. I don't know. But okay. an average potato, how many potato chips are coming out of that thing? Okay. 26. Oh, I thought it was 36. I don't know. I think it was 26. I swear it was 36. Are I was you like, serious? I was like, that is Wait, so many. I, had I feel so much better about eating 36 potatoes. Did I, did I delete potato? I swear I'm it was more potato honey. potato in my notes. Honey. It was 36. Not me being a Not fucking liar. Lying. A liar on my own podcast. Shit. Um, anyway, so that's a fun stat. And then I have more. I have Valentine's Day stats I'd like Ooh, to share with you. I love a little trivia. Um, there is an Instagram account I follow called Pew Research. Pew, pew. Pew. Um, pee -pee. And they just have really. Pee, -pee research. <laughs> pee, pee Should we start that? <laughs> we just pull the pee -pees. Wait. And it's just like, according to a study done by the Staying Up podcast of the pee -pees. <laughs> Dude, a pee pee poll. 100% of people should. are queer. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Um, they gave out a swipey of um, a swipey. Uh, you know what I mean? An infograph? Yeah, like a dump of um, carousel. Carousel of interesting Valentine's Day slash love slash relationship stats. So I'll be sharing tell those me, with you today. Me. What percent of Americans say that they are in a committed romantic relationship of some sort? Sixty-two. Sixty-nine. <gasps> Which oh, of course it was. <laughs> Should have guessed. Okay. 
Is that real or are they trolling us? Of course that's real. Oh. How many in 10 <laughs> Americans, course. how many in 10 Americans say that they are single? This is, that's Shouldn't not. I be able to do the math yeah. from the last one? You should. Shouldn't it be like three to four? Okay. It's varied by age. Never mind. I'm going to stop quizzing you. Okay. No, I want to be quizzed. Okay. U.S. adults, 30%, as we can assume from the 69 that are in a committed relationship. Yeah. Um, what percent of men versus women say that they're single? Men say, uh, it, what age group? Men are 55 percent are single and women are 30 percent men are 32 women are 28 that's so close and which percent or which age group i'm going to give you four age groups okay which age group is the most single say that they're the most single babies 18 to 29 30 to 49 50 to 64 65 and up oh the lowest or the highest lowest like, no, or sorry, uh, who is the most single? I'm saying it's either the lowest group, the oh, 18 oh. to whatever, or the highest group. The most single age group is 18 to 29. They're out having a funny old time. Then the second most single age group is, is 65 and up. I'm amazing. Then 50 to 64, yeah. then 30 to 49. Yeah. Only I'm, 20% of people in our age group are I'm, single. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which is interesting. Okay. Um. Okay. A record share of 40-year-olds have never been married. Wait, what? As of 2021, a quarter of 40-year-olds had never been married. Never. You know what? That That's makes amazing. sense because I feel like 40-year-olds right now are like the top of millennials, I guess, or maybe a little higher than that. But that was the time frame where people were waiting longer to get married, yes. not getting married early 20s. And as we saw that stat of the most successful time to get married is between 28 and 32. Yeah. Um, I feel like they got past that phase and were like. I'm not doing that. One, the pool's smaller. I'm not well versed on dating apps because I'm a little bit too old for that. Yeah. And I'm comfortable with my life. Yeah. And now I just, I'm not doing it. Funky. Makes sense. The most, the year that the most 40 year olds were married yeah was 1980 19 okay yeah that makes 94 percent of 40 <gasps> year olds had been married that's huge everyone yeah. and like if you look at this graph it dipped Pivots, and, and then, then went boom like every year it's just getting less and less people no that are one's 40. getting married three in ten people u.s adults say that they have never used a dating app three in ten mm-hmm. that's low and one in 10 partnered adults met their current significant other through a dating site or app. Wow. That's also kind of low. It would have been fun to meet you on a dating app. Yeah, that would have been fun. I do think about that. Aw. Like imagining finding your profile and then being like, oh my God, what do I say? You're it's so, so cute. cute to think about. I love you. Do you think- I know. I do kind of wish like we were just friends for so long before we dated. I'm like. What would happen if we met at a bar yeah. or like just got to like, I don't know, just like flirt in the wild? Yeah. Hmm. I asked Taryn the other day if, because I don't think I've ever been flirted with at a bar. Like I don't Which think anyone, I found preposterous. It's true. Every time when I was single, for the very small amounts of time <laughs> in my life that I was single and I'd go to the a bar. The one time you went to a bar when you were single. <laughs> <laughs> no one would ever flirt with me ever. And I like was really insecure when I was in LA and like am I not do I not look gay enough and I was just so frustrated so I asked Taryn if she would pretend to not know me at a bar and come flirt with me and I said easily bro I can't wait I think you said no No. you did you were like I don't want to pretend like I don't know you you said something no I said that like that's cute like I don't want to pretend I don't know you that's I want to be with you but then I was like of course we can role play I don't think you said that last part out loud because I was so sad I was like why We've talked about role playing a lot, though. In I know. Early days in our relationship, we talked about that a lot. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Cam Ooh. and I recently had like a really big heart to heart because we both felt like we weren't getting the the attention and love that we needed. Yeah. The right way, like the the love that the way we needed to be loved. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had like this very tender, sweet conversation. It was really nice. It was really nice. It made me feel so close to you, and like so seen and I felt like oh, I really get what you're feeling right now same 
It was cute. And it's just feeling like a lot. I don't know. Like, I think that we just got really busy over the holidays. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of deal with life the same way. Yeah. Things just feel heavy and like we just want to feel like cozy and safe. But then we're not giving like we're just wanting cuddled and like. We want to be obsessed over babied a little bit. Yeah. But then it's like two babies who's (laughs) who's taking care of me. Well, I'm I'm just a baby. (laughs) If you're a baby and I'm a little baby, then who's mm, your who's mama? T- oh. <laughs> oh, uh, who's papa? I don't like that. <laughs> um, should we get into our gossip story? Yeah. We're like 47 minutes in. Oh my God. Let's do it. Because um, this is some juicy gossip. Okay. What? Let me pull it up. I was just seeing if any of these other stats are interesting. 63% of US adults said that dating got harder during the pandemic. Fucking doy. <laughs> doy. 63%? Yeah, it should be. Uh, 100% of people think dating got harder. 72% of single Americans who aren't looking to date say that enjoying the single life is a reason why. Mm. The Okay, here we go. These are the top reasons people enjoy the single life. Down to the least top reasons. Yeah. Ugh. Um, Just being single. <laughs> Next is have more important oh just like being single then it's having more important priorities right now Mm. then it's too busy then it's feel like no one would be interested (gasps) no then feels like i am too old then did they not watch the golden bachelor concerns about being exposed to the coronavirus (laughs) wait this was all during covid this was february of 2022 this was last year last year no that's two years ago it's 2024 Oh, no, baby. Oh, no. I'm not ready for it to be that. I know. Okay. Um, I did ask for questions on the staying up Instagram, which we will maybe we'll answer some on the Instagram, but we might save them for the Discord chat on Friday. So if you submitted a question and you're bummed that you're not seeing your answer today's episode, we will get to them. Come join us on Discord. As episode 50, we thought let's hit them with a big, big hit them with that good, good hit them. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. What are you doing? I'm scared of the story. I thought you were like letting out a long burp. No, I'm like, oh okay. my God. So we okay, hit you peace. with the best story we wait, have. Wait, wait. I need everyone to have open mind and open heart. Oh, open because heart. this is a real pee pee writing into us. This is not a bit. This is not Taryn's bit about Bobby. This is <laughs> how we know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. This is real story. This is real. Take it away, Terry Bear. Okay. And we will be dissecting this in Deeply. the Discord shortly after this goes up. <laughs> the subject line of this email from our precious PP said, first cousin sex. <laughs> really quick, though. It does <laughs> remind me in Mean Girls when Karen's like, they were like, you you slept with your cousin? She's like, he's my first cousin. You have your cousins. Then your first cousins. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that's not how that works, sweetie. <laughs> but what? Stop it. You got me. I was like, no. What did I get you with yesterday that was so good? You like pointed. It was like a name. We were leaving the farmer's market and you were like, the Jonas Brothers have beef with another band. And And you were like, who? And what did the wall say? It said like, Box Brothers. Brothers. (laughs) So dumb. Okay. First cousin sex. Lay it on me. This is from our PP. My suggested topic is first cousin sex easy happy to happy to chat <laughs> when don't we talk about that <laughs> we're always talking have you never listened before um i cannot get any of my friends to weigh in on the topic they just mm. emphatically state that it's wrong okay but i want to know why i believe the negative spin on the issue started with procreation and contaminating dna pools resulting in birth deformities slash developmental delays i have no interest in procreating with my first cousin who we will call lisa I just want to have mutual, enjoyable sex. Is that so wrong? (laughs) Yes, of course there is more to this story. Lisa and I did not know each other well growing up for geographical reasons. Mm -hmm. We recently got to know each other better when she came for a two-week visit after my father passed. She helped with settling his estate fares as, as she had just gone through that with her father, my dad's brother her uncle which she's not saying but that is yeah trying to distance them. <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> 
She dealt with that She's with like, her my papa father's too. brother, my papa. Okay. <laughs> She was very supportive and I appreciated her knowledge. And I will say, I did find Trauma her bonding. intelligence a turn on. Mm. Sexy. <laughs> Procreation aside, first cousin sex is considered morally wrong. Again, why? Is it a too close to home issue? In my opinion, you would have more things in common. And if I'm being totally transparent, I suppose it is more than just sexual ideations. I really like her and feel such a connection that I've never felt before. Me saying that is quite something because I've been an out lesbian sex since 16 years of age. I'm now 46 and I've had several long-term relationships. Yes, there's another twist to this story, which I believe makes having sex with Lisa wrong. And it has nothing to do with her being my first cousin. She is married to a man. Well, that's going to put a wrench in the situation. The main issue for me is being married, whether it be to a man or a woman. So no worries, ladies. Her being married automatically stops her from being an option for sex. But a girl can Correct. dream. <laughs> Correct dancer. But a girl can dream sounds like something I would have written. Yes. <laughs> Did you write in, honey? So yes or no. <laughs> Is it morally right or wrong based just on first cousin classification? Like what's up with it's okay with a second kissing cousin? With a second cousin. A kissing cousin. Who makes up this shit? Mm. Thank you for giving me a moment to share. Ugh. I mean, like, it's just so easy for my first instinct to be like, that is your cousin. That is why it is wrong. Yes. End of story. But then when she kept being like, but why? And it, again, we're taking procreation off the table because yeah. that's not possible. Um, I think it could be if they tried hard enough. <laughs> I just, I don't know what to say. Well, let me like, give you why. a little more worldwide stats to just get us out of our US mindset. Okay. And then... Okay, okay. Actually, some of this is in the U.S. So these are real stats I looked up on First Cousin Sex. It was a joy to be Googling Dot such com. a thing. <laughs> My website, <laughs> which I'm selling ad space on. Okay. <laughs> Marriages and sex sexual relationships between first cousins are stigmatized as incest in some cultures, but tolerated in much of the world. Mm. Currently, 24 U.S. states prohibit marriages between first cousins, and another seven permit them only under certain circumstances. So mm. only 24 states in the U.S. don't allow this. Yeah. Legally. Legally. The United Kingdom permits both marriage and sexual relations between first cousins. Mm. In some non-Western societies, marriages between close biological relatives account for 20 to 60% of all marriages. 20 to 60? That's high. First and second cousin marriages are rare in Western Europe, North America, and Oceania. What the fuck is Oceania? Is that like Australia? I don't know. What is Oceana? It sounds like a Disney. <laughs> Do we have any listeners from the great state of Oceana? I think it's Australia. Maybe it's down, like that's what they call that region. It is. Is it? Yeah. Australia, Australia New, Zealand. New Zealand, Fiji, yeah. Marshall I Islands, Papua New Guinea. Sorry, guys. There's a bunch of places. Do you ever say you're from Oceana? Wow. What, because they're just like deep in the ocean? I guess they're just like, those are the ocean people. First and second cousin marriages are rare in Western Europe, Northern America, or mm. North America and Oceania, accounting for less than 1% of marriages, but reach 9% of marriages in South America, East Asia, and South Europe, and about 50% <sighs> in regions of the Middle East, North America, and South Asia. How do you feel now that I've shared these I, I think it's scintillating just so, <laughs> I think it's so cultural where like, America, we broke free from England where I feel like it was happening a lot. Like anytime, anytime you have like a Royal family and it's like, keep it in the bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. I think we kind of reject that idea because it really created clear lines of like rich and poor. It like it separated people so much hmm. that I feel like we tried to go against that of like, you, you shouldn't be doing that. We should be mixing families and communities together and bringing people together, not like staying in your bloodline. I don't know that that's what people want it. Like, I think you're very ahead of the game saying that the world didn't want to have those separations, but like people but did. That, like we left England for a reason. And I feel like when we restarted America, things kind of ended up going to shit. But I think the initial idea was to kind of go against all of those Bro, preconceived I ideas. Bro, about history. That's crazy. But <laughs> um, I also think it depends on like 
what kind of area are you from? Is it a small area where there's really not options? So then it's yeah. less frowned upon. I don't know. I'm just like, why do it when you could just not do it? It's the same thing where I'm like, yeah, you can prevent yourself from falling in love with someone. Like, don't let yourself get there with someone. Don't don't put yourself in those situations. So it's like, don't you can develop a crush on a cousin but to let it get yeah. that far where you're like, I must be with this human or not because your family's always there. I don't know. I can't think I mean, of my like clear answer of like why it feels so icky. The, I mean, the clear answer of why it feels icky is because we've always been told our entire lives that it's icky and it's a no-go and yeah. it's the butt of every joke in pop culture and movies and yeah. whatever. It's like, oh my God, what, are you going to kiss your cousin or, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the joke, but it's things like <laughs> something that. Something like that. Something like that, where it's like, it's always gross. Yeah. And incest, like familial, your close mom, dad, brother, sister vibes is like so hard to even fathom doing mm-hmm. that I think that we extend that to our cousins. Yeah. It's like if we are not, if we're going the other way where we're like saying, yeah, cousins, that's not weird if you're not going to procreate where there's no risk for the baby sure but then you're putting these weird parameters where it's like yes okay not okay but then where does that stop how do people then not go like your siblings are fair game Yeah, just kiss your dad if you're not gonna procreate uh, just kiss your dad stop it (laughs) it's like gross (laughs) (laughs) however okay i okay i'm trying to put myself in your shoes because i've certainly never been there with a man named bobby (laughs) however hypothetically um i wait 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 what i just watched the oj simpson clip this morning of how he he's like hypothetically let's say i did kill her yeah, yeah. and then he goes on to be and like exactly oh i don't remember that part i don't remember and we're like you can't remember a hypothetical like <sighs> the way he's I talking know he said about, that oh, he says it like three times oh that makes me sick they're like well how did you get in he's like i don't remember if it was locked or not and you're like hypothetically you're just saying it. you were just like the door is unlocked hypothetically but I mean, in that it's like in his book or whatever. I think he is he admitting he's like saying I am. He was. This was in an, in an interview. I hate that. And she's like, hypothetically, tell me how. You so did. hypothetically, you slept with your cousin so hypothetically, Bobby. even though I definitely didn't sleep with cousin Bobby. I love you. Call me. <laughs> um, I would tell our friend Lisa. No, not Lisa. Lisa's the the person Mary who wrote one. in. Our people who wrote in. I would say that you should count your blessings that this person is married, yeah, and that you take that as a good boundary Mm -hmm. that's a gift from god above yeah um yeah you don't even have to like risk it going there and i would not take this as a opportunity to look at other cousins (laughs) like like i don't think it's about that i wouldn't I wouldn't be like okay sweet since i had this crush on my cousin and i actually maybe kind of love her now my cousins are an option like I would still really, for the sake of you and your sanity, like go not pursue this opportunity. I just Googled like, oh, why is it wrong to sleep with your cousin? I just thought like there would be somebody who eloquently explains the yeah. ickiness out of incest. And this is from November 15, 2016 on Cora. the uk. <laughs> is it wrong to have sex with your cousin? No, it's perfectly natural to want to have sex with your cousin. Go for it. Is what that says. But I, I think Cam said it right in that it's like, just because you could, maybe don't. You still don't have to. And I wouldn't. It's a little more complicated than it needs to be. And there are so many other people. And so why pursue the one that does ooh, ooh. have a little bit of... I have a reason. Okay. It's not why it's icky, but it's like another reason not to go there. Like you shouldn't be dating a lot of times in your friend group because then if you break up, it causes issues in the friend group. That's a great. Imagine causing issues in your family. 100%. But they're adults. That's the difference. They're like 46. But still, that can still cause rifts in families. Yeah. It's just like there's some people in life that you shouldn't go there with. It's the same thing of like, I really like my best friend's ex or whatever <clears throat> something along those lines yeah. it's like there are certain people you just don't go there with it's wrong yeah case closed yeah homie pee pee maybe this isn't the opportunity for you and by maybe i mean probably and i would i think they're caught up in the appeal of it being taboo and wrong because she's married 
I think they're like excited. Like this is weighing. They they said I'm never gonna go near this person. They're married off limits. But I'm wondering about the cousin thing. Like I feel like they're thinking about it so much because they're like this is because it's bad. Yeah, forbidden, forbidden fruit. fruit. Forbidden, <laughs> forbidden fruit. fruit. Then go for it. <laughs> Don't go for it. Fruit rocks. Oh lordy! Especially all right. when you steal it. We will catch you all. <gasps> Wait, I have the funniest thing. Oh, God, what? Today, we go to this local baseball field and let the dogs run around. Local baseball field. Local ball park. Yeah. Let the dogs run around. <laughs> and um, this lady must work for the city or something. And she came today and she was like <gasps> carrying. She's lurking. She was carrying lurking. bases while she was leaving. And I was like, babe, look, she's stealing base. <laughs> she stole the base. You love sharing <laughs> jokes you previously told. <laughs> and... <laughs> That is just a once in a lifetime opportunity yeah. that there was a woman carrying bases away. Mm-hmm. We'll never see that again. You're right. <laughs> so she stole the base. Anywho, we will catch y'all on the Discord. We are so excited. We're so excited. Check y'all. out the Patreon if you want bonus content. We are stoked to keep this podcast rolling and give you guys more stuff and hang out with you guys and have more opportunities to connect with y'all. So. We'll catch you in the group chat. Links will be in the show notes, on our socials, everywhere. They won't be hard to find. But in short, patreon.com slash staying up will give you the links to everything. Discord access and then the paid Discord access and extra content and all the shit. Love y'all. Sweet dreams. We love you. Happy 50. Couldn't have done it without you. Sweet dreams. Couldn't have done it without y'all. Bye. Kiss your cousin. Don't forget. Don't kiss your cousin. Kiss your cousin because they're the only person who is legally supposed to be close to you. What? Familiarly close to you. <laughs> Even if you break up, you stay together.